There is little doubt in the minds of those who view such affairs from both near and far that Hillary Clinton's tenor, uh, tenure rather, as Secretary of State remains to this day a flashpoint of controversy. A forthcoming book focusing on our gaffes in Iraq brings the presidential candidate into the conversation. Though it seems some people are missing what was actually written and what is actually being reported. Our guest is senior fellow at Yale University's Jackson Institute, former political advisor and author of the soon-to-be-released book, The Unraveling, High Hopes and Missed Opportunities in Iraq. It's a pleasure to welcome Emma Skye to Midpoint. Emma, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Emma, from the Sunday Telegraph, this past weekend written by Colin Freeman, they have the headline, Accusing Hillary Clinton of Role in Meltdown of Iraq to You, and they also say it paints an unflattering picture of the Obama administration as it tried to extricate itself from the country as hastily as possible. But the big thing here is it takes your reporting and says that you were hammering away at Hillary Clinton. You say not true. It's absolutely not true. My book has not yet come out in the United Kingdom. It's out in the U.S. And I think the Telegraph just took an opportunity to take a cheap shot at Hillary Clinton and this represents myself, and this represents my views. What did they specifically get wrong, and what might they have seen in the book that led them to believe that you were accusing Mrs. Clinton of the role in the meltdown? Well, as I said, they've not seen the book, and they have admitted they haven't seen the book. So I don't know quite where they're, where they're getting this information from. Why would they be doing it? Because it's, it's a book that is so thorough in so many ways. Why would they be taking you to task for something that they know is false? I mean, The Telegraph has got its own political agenda. It is a right-wing newspaper. Anybody who reads my book will see that, you know, it starts in 2003 and goes right the way through to the present day discussing all the different policy mistakes that were made. It's written as a memoir. It's written, it's my experiences. I met Hillary Clinton in Cook in 2003, and I found her very engaging with American soldiers, and she was very interested in Iraqis. And I have to say, compared with a lot of the other politicians who came to visit us, Hillary Clinton was quite impressive. You spent more time in Iraq than any other senior military or political figure. You know the landscape here. You report in this book that Hillary Clinton was not responsible for Iraq, but in your opinion then, who was? Well, if you start right the way back at the beginning, 2003, then the whole idea of actually going to war based on the rationale was supposed to be weapons of mass destruction, which Iraq turned out not to have. There's a problem right from the get-go of the legitimacy of the war. After the invasion, there was no plan for the occupation. And this allowed a massive power vacuum. Then there were the mistakes of debarsification and dissolving the military, which led to the collapse of the state. So you can see there was a litany of mistakes in the initial years. I think only from 2007 to 2009 did the U.S. have the right policy, with the right leadership, the right strategy, and the right resources. And that was during the surge. I think the main mistake made by the Obama administration was in 2010, after Iraq's national elections, they're not upholding the right of the winning bloc to have first go at forming the government. So there's enough blame to go around. But Let the biggest mistake has to be the invasion. Let me say this, and I only have about 30 seconds left. Is it your opinion then in the book that President Obama could have stopped the rise of ISIS and the fall of Iraq had he made the right decisions? I believe that if President Obama and his administration, in particular the vice president, had upheld the right of the winning bloc to have first go at forming the election, then there would be much more consensus in Iraq, and this would have stopped the rise of ISIS. Let's put it this way. The Sunday Telegraph and Colin Freeman got it all wrong. They haven't even looked at the book yet. The book, once again, is called The Unraveling, High Hopes and Missed Opportunities in Iraq. It looks like a fascinating account from somebody who was on the ground for a long period of time and knows from when she speaks. Emma Skye, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Five years later, and the folks at BP are still selling their version of the Gulf oil disaster. Let's find out the reality next on Midpoint.